Now, it's easy to forget that mental health is part of your overall physical well-being. Our next guest knows all too well that ignoring the symptoms of depression doesn't help. Kamini Raju Russell joins us now in Diet and Fitness. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mel. You're looking great. Well, so are you. It is you. really lovely to have you in the studio. Um, your last decade of your life has been quite a roller coaster, hasn't it? Tell us a little bit about your story. Oh, my goodness. Where do I start? So... The most exciting thing happened to me. I became a mum for the first time, um, got this bundle of joy put in my arms and I just didn't know what to do. I was constantly crying um, louder and more than the baby, <laughs> you could say. And um, it just happened for a long time. So yeah. I went and saw my GP and guess what? I was diagnosed with clinical um, depression and it hit my ego quite hard because um, I never thought that a strong woman like me could ever fall into um, being diagnosed with depression. And so I just felt really angry. It's really interesting that you say that because you're right. You say a strong woman like yourself and the ego does come into it. It can be a bit of a shock, can't it? Oh, it, was a, it was a massive shock because, you know, I expected everybody else to have it, but not me. Mm. And here I was, and I looked at it as a massive character flaw until I started researching into it and realized that actually it's not a character flaw. Mm. It's an imbalance of chemicals in my brain. So I was getting massive brain pain and I was just beating myself up for nothing. Mm -hmm. Looking back, what do you wish you'd done differently? Um, my initial reaction is to say nothing because I've learned a lot about myself um, going through it. But um, I would have um, been a bit more open about my depression, especially when it comes to my family and friends. Mm. Uh, I would have um, let them know about it. The thing about mums too is that as a mum you tend to put on that happy mask. You make everything all right for everybody else. Do you think that's that's true? Oh, that was, that was just so much the game at that time. Um, uh, especially when Gianna was born. She's um, almost 10 now. And um, we had this mums group and um, if we'd went for morning tea, everything was laid out immaculately. And I lived in this fear of, oh my gosh, what's going to happen when they come over to my house? And um, see the mess I am. <laughs> it was it was quite daunting, really, um, mm -hmm. to be in that position. And I think the thing is, is that there's so many people out there in this in a similar situation, but you don't know that at the time, do you? Really? No, you don't, because we don't talk about it. We think, again, like I said, we think that it's a character flaw mm. and in not. ourselves. It's not. Do you think being honest with our friends and family that is really the way to get the ball the ball rolling, get things started? Um, it's, it's a big yes and no. It depends on how educated your friends and family are when it comes to depression. I mean, I'm, I'm Indian and there are some relatives I won't even mention depression to because they are not very educated in that area. Whereas um, there are some friends I can openly talk to about depression and um, how it feels when you're caught in the moment of the darkest hour and it's all right. It's so. obviously really important that you do talk about it. Oh, absolutely. And um, that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm talking to women about um, talking about it, making it a conversation, um, asking the person sitting right next to, next to you how they are. And mm. if you know that they have... Um, have a slight chance of being depressed or um, have been diagnosed, then asking them how you can help. Yes, because quite often that, that instant reaction is, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Um, what about your day-to-day -day coping mechanisms? What do you do to cope with depression on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, well, it's, it's, you know, one that I'm never going to let go. And it's the first thing, keep on top of my medication. I don't play with it. I take it diligently. And um, the next best thing I've done for myself is getting rid of that perfectionist in me. Um, it's okay if um, nothing's done. I, uh, I don't have to prove anything to anyone and it's, it comes with a lot of um, self-acceptance and mm. understanding. Um, another um, tool I use is um, Attitude for Gratitude where I wake up in the morning and before I jump out of bed like I used to, I 
count five things on my hand that I'm really grateful for. Um, it could be a great night's sleep if mm. the five-year-old doesn't jump in Ooh. bed. Yes, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and just simple things, um, you know, stopping and enjoying that cup of tea, mm. taking taking that self-care to uh, to that level where you're actually enjoying mm. it and and not just enduring it. Living in the moment and also the, the gratitude things I think you talk about is something that everybody can benefit from. It's been an absolute pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you so much. Really good advice too, I think, from Carmody. Now, for advice or information, check out Carmody's Talk To Me Facebook page.